So what you have are 15 actions, and here's the assumption. The assumption is if you are not violating any of those 15, you are in fact practicing competently, all right? So it's kind of a reverse process. They name the 15 mistakes, and if you're not doing those, then you're good, all right? So those are what we actually need to make sure that we continue with and don't uh, violate any of those. If you're not doing those, you're okay. Now, what happens if you are doing those? Well, here's the sanctions that they can apply to you across the board. The first one is letter A1, they can actually revoke your license completely. That is the big Mama Luca penalty. They can evoke, revoke your license. They can suspend your license. Typically, when they suspend it, they will suspend it with a time frame like six months, four months, something like that. Numbers three and four, they can censure you or they can issue a letter of reprimand. Now, the big difference between three and four, these two things, censure you is when you get in trouble and you come in and they yell at you like a little school kid. You, well, you stupid, you should have known. All right. Issuing a letter of reprimand is a formal written complaint that will actually stay in your file and can be used at a later date to help build a case if you are have a propensity to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. All right. So a censure basically is you get in trouble, they'll find you and you everybody's out the door. A letter of reprimand, they may put it in your file so the next time you come in, they're gonna go, hey dude, we told you about this a year ago. Now we're gonna escalate this issue up, okay? They can also place you on probation, which by the way, this is their favorite thing. And there are several different types of probation. Letter A is what they call reporting probation, meaning that, that you have to report to the uh, committee and tell them what you're doing. They can actually limit you. They can tell you, hey, you screwed this short sale up, don't do any more. They can actually give you education probation. Everybody does 12 hours a year. They could say, hey, we want you to do an extra four hours. And usually they name the topic. And that topic usually has something to do with whatever you did wrong. So for instance, they may say, okay, everybody's got to do 12 hours. Raymond, this year, we want you to do your 12 hours plus four more on property management because you made a mistake while you were a property manager. So I would have to seek out 16 hours this year. Uh, letter D, we've talked about, they can refrain, tell you to refrain from doing certain acts. They can also for, uh, charge, make you do uh, community service, all right? They can also ask you to repay or um, repay the, the violation if you have been in trouble. Community restitution, that's the word I was looking for. They can force you to perform community restitution. Letter F says that they can perform a peer review to make, make it part of your probation. A peer review would be where you're sentenced to go in front of a group of your peers. Now, sounds really weird, but trust me, it happens all the time. The most common one, Alcoholics Anonymous. I have actually know at least two or three people that have been sentenced to go to Alcoholics Anonymous while their uh, license was suspended. One young lady got three DUIs in a year. So she had all of her criminal issues she was dealing with, but the commission said, that's a propensity to endanger the public. Your DUI, you get somebody in the car, somebody outside of the car. 
So they actually suspended her license until she came back with a certificate from Alcoholics Anonymous showing that she went to the class, all right? Now, the funny thing to me, I've never understood Alcoholics Anonymous because the first thing you do is you get up and go, hi, my name's Raymond. Do they not understand what the word anonymous means? You would think, hi, my name's Sue. Yeah, that's my name. So that nobody knows. Uh, they can assess a civil penalty. It says up to $1,000. Trust me, that's their favorite number. But then number seven comes along and says, <clears throat> yeah, 7B, when imposing a civil penalty, the board shall consider your ability to pay. Well, that's at least nice of them because here they suspended your license and fined you $1,000. How are you going to pay the thousand? And we've talked about that before, jokingly about, you know, losing your driver's license or something like that. Now, it's not in here, and maybe it is, maybe we'll get to it, but one of the new things they're real hot on right now is the deadbeat dad law. If a person is behind in child support and there is a some kind of rule, if it's more than $2,000 or five weeks or something like that, the state can suspend your real estate license. All right, so they do practice and they're really hip on that deadbeat dad, dad law for people that don't pay their child support, which I guess could be a female too. The board may withdraw or modify the probation when they find that the deficiency or the requirement has been met, which makes sense. They put me on probation until something happens. Once that something happens, they can withdraw the probation and put me back into normal uh, situation. Now, I told you, you have to go in front of a commission to lose your license. There is one situation where they can summarily suspend your license for up to 90 days if they feel that you are doing something that is a direct threat to the public. The only thing I can think of that would solve letter 2A and B is if someone came to the commission and said, I think Raymond is stealing earnest money. He's got a new Ferrari, he's dressing really nice. And that would be a case of, well, heck, today's Thursday, our meeting's not till next month, we can suspend his license and stop him from practicing until he gets in front of the board and explains what's going on. Now, before they can suspend my license though, they literally have to kind of try and get a hold of me. The attorney general's office has to make an attempt to try and get a hold of me so that they can tell me, hey, we're gonna suspend your license. All right. Um, they can reinstate a suspended license if your license gets suspended. Once that you have completed the requirement or the board is satisfied with whatever happened, they can remove your suspension and reinstate it so that you're back active. So I go into the commission and they're like, dude, we, we've heard you've been stealing earnest money. And I'm like, no, I actually hit the lottery and now I'm a millionaire and I bought a new car. And they're like, oh, okay, our bad. We can reinstate your license. Number four says this, if your license gets revoked, you cannot practice again until at least seven years and you have to go back through all of the process again. All right, if your license is revoked, you have to wait a minimum of seven years and they could still deny you after you wait. So now, the other day we talked about 
when the uh, real estate recovery fund pays out the money and I told you, guess what happens to their license? And you guys smartly suggested that it gets suspended because if they revoked it, that license can never be reinstated. It, that guy would have to go back through the whole process. So they don't want to revoke his license. They just want to suspend it until he repays the money. Then they will reactivate him again. Um, consistency of the sanctions. All these sanctions have to be applied consistently. That law kind of makes me worried because the only time we actually have a law is when someone's breaking the law. So for them to have written a law that says they must apply their, consanction, their sanctions evenly tends to make me think that they weren't and got caught. All right. Number six has been removed, we don't care. Number seven says, you cannot surrender your license without the permission of the commission. So you can't just give your license back. They have to accept it and they can deny your surrender, especially if you are in the middle of an administrative investigation by the real estate commission or by the attorney general or by any other body of legislature, all right? So in other words, what they're saying here, you cannot surrender your license to avoid getting in trouble. If they caught you or you think they're going to catch you, you can't go, yeah, my bad here, I'll give my license up. No. They will deny your surrender and they will take you through the process. They will issue whatever penalty they decide to issue. Then they will accept your surrender. That way your punishment is on the books so that if you ever decide to come back into the business, your punishment is waiting on you when you come back. All right, so you cannot surrender your license just to avoid getting in trouble. Now, if they have to have a court hearing for you, you will pay all of the fees associated with that. So not only are you going to get hung, you're going to buy the rope that hangs yourself. All right. Now, they can't charge you for court costs because right to trial, but they will charge you for all the other stuff. And there's a list, transcriptions, photo duplication, witnesses, private detectives, depositions, notarizations, anything that requires a payment because they are interviewing you specifically you are going to do, go pay for it. Thumbs up. Cool. All right. Now, when you apply for a license, they actually can refuse to give you a license or they can actually give you a license immediately on probation. You can come into this business on probation. If you have done something in your past that would constitute the commission putting you on probation, but you didn't have a license and now you make application, you could still be in the middle of it. Hey, I was arrested for DUI last month. I go to trial tomorrow. Today's my, uh, meeting with the commission, they would might say, you know, if you were found guilty while you were licensed, we might put you on probation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to issue you a license on probation out of the gate, especially if you have been disciplined by another licensing entity of another state. 
So if you're on probation in Florida and you make application in Indiana, they might just issue you one out of the gate. If you had committed an act that would cause you to be subject to a probation while you were licensed, they may issue you one on license. Are we cool? They could also, letter B, just completely refuse to issue you a license if they want. Now, if they issue you a license in probation, then you must report or limit your scope or more education. It's the same penalty that if you were put on probation when you had a license that we just talked about 10 minutes ago. So are we understanding this scenario? This is your making application while you're in the process and they can issue you one on probation. <clears throat> they can actually perform you to do community service, same stuff. 10, they can ask you to come in front of the board. I told you they did this with David. He applied and said he had been in prison for five years. So they asked him to come in front of the board. There was another young gentleman who was arrested for theft of his parents' credit card and his parents actually pressed charges, that old tough love thing. And he did his time and all of that. But when he made application, he announced it like you should. And the commission called him up in front and his parents actually were there and they did a character witness for him and the, and the commission ended up giving him his license, all right? 